Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering Bob's from Problem Set 2. So how is our program gonna work? Our program is gonna prompt the user for a message and then convert the message into a binary. Alright? So for example, H is 72, I is 73, and exclamation mark is 33, and they will be converted into a binary, and based on what um, the numbers in the binary are, it will either be a black bulb or a yellow bulb. So 0 for black and 1 for yellow, alright? Alright, so how are we going to do this problem? Um, to just illustrate how we're going to solve this problem, I'm going to draw out and draw sort of like a flow chart of how our program is going to flow and what we're going to do uh, during each of those processes. Alright, so here we have GIMP. And so the first step in our program is going to be uh, asking the user for their string, right? String, okay? So now, for example, we have hi exclamation mark, okay? So this is asking the user for a string. Next, we want to iterate through the string uh, to index into each character, okay? So iterate, for example, um, and then obviously for this, we're going to use a for loop. And for example, we iterate into an h, all right? Then from the character h, we want to convert it to a decimal. So for example, h is going to be 72 in ASCII, all right? From this 72, we want to convert it to a binary, all right? So 72 is going to be 01001000, okay? So now this is probably the reason why you guys came here to see how to convert a decimal to a binary and how exactly uh, can we convert a decimal to a binary. So in the hints here, they mentioned that we could just divide the decimal by 2 and then depending on what the remainder is, we just add it to the back. And for example, uh, they used 4 in our scenario. So 4 divided by 2 is going to be remainder of 0, so it's going to be 0. And then uh, 2 divided by 2 is going to be 0 again. And so we have the next 0 on the left here. And then we have 1 here, which we got on our previous step. And 1 divided by 2 is going to leave a remainder of 1. And we have a 1 here. So this is the exact formula that we will also be using for our calculation. So how are we going to store the decimal? So how we store our binary is very, very important in this scenario. And in this situation, I'll be using an array because it's the most simplest way to store uh, this stack of numbers. All right. Why? Because, for example, if you want to store it in an int, we won't be getting a zero in the front here. All right. And also, uh, it's a very, very tedious process using an int. An array is so much more easier. If you guys want to have a first hand experience, you guys can try using an int. But in our scenario, we'll be using an array. So for example, we have 72. And let's just go through the thought process of how it's going to work. So 72 divided by 2 is going to be is gonna be 36 with a remainder of 0. So we have 0 uh, at the back of this array here. And if you guys noticed, the array starts from uh, the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But then we want our remainder here to be all the way at the end of the array. So technically, um, our array is going to iterate from 7 onwards. So index 7 of the array is going to be 0. And then index 6 of the array is going to be 36 divided by 2. It is going to be 18, remainder 0. So we have another 0 here. And then we have the index 5, which is going to be 18 divided by 2. 9 with the remainder of 0. And then we have 9 divided by 2, and we have 4 remainder of 1. So index 4 is going to be 1 because uh, 4 remainder 1. And then we have the third index of the array. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2 with the remainder of 0. And then we have the second array, and it's going to be 2 divided by 2, remainder of 0. And then we have the first array, which is going to be 1 divided by 2. And the remainder is going to be 1. And then we have the 0th index. And this is just going to be 0. Okay, so as you can see here, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 perfectly matches with what they have in uh, the problem set here, as you can see. Alright, 
So this is the step we're going to use. We are going to be finding the remainder and then we'll also be dividing it by 2. Alright, we are going to be doing both of these processes at the same time. So let's begin solving this problem set. So here we have our code. The first step is to simply ask the user for their message. So it's going to be string input equals to get string message. Next, we want to index into every character of the string. And so we can use a for loop for int i equals to zero i less than the length of the string i plus plus. So to find the length of the string, we can use strlength function. And why we want to put strlength here instead of here is because for every single iteration of the loop, we don't want to keep calculating the sh uh, length of the string because the length of the string is going to always be the same. And so it's just optimizing the code just a little bit. So now we want to find out the exact decimal for our character and let's create another variable for that and put decimal value so decimal value is gonna be equal to the input and uh, indexing into the character in the string and when we are converting a character into an integer we are automatically taking the s key value so for example h in our scenario is gonna be 72 i is gonna be 73 and exclamation mark is gonna be 33 and it's auto uh, converted here now what we want to do is do the process of dividing it by two and then also getting the remainder how we are we going to do that uh, first and foremost let's use a for loop but before that uh, recall that i wanted to store my binary in uh, an array so let me create an array of size 8 and instead of writing 8 i can use this bits and bytes since it's already equals to 8 and it's it's sort of like a clue given by CS50 that we are supposed to use an array. So for int i equals to bits and byte, i as long as i is more than zero, i minus minus. So why are we starting our counter from the number eight? Actually, it's gonna be eight minus one. We want to start our counter from eight minus one because we want to be storing our remainder at the back of the array, right? At the back of the array, at the back of the array, at the back of the array. We don't want to store, be storing it at the front of the array because uh, that's how binary work, right? It starts from all the way on the right side, but arrays in general start indexing from the left side. So instead of indexing from the left side, we want to index from the right side and just continue iterating through the right. All right. So if you guys don't get it, don't worry. Uh, while typing the code, hopefully um, it clicks for you guys. And if you have any further question, comment down below and I'll, I'll try to give uh, further explanations. So binary i is going to be equal to the remainder after we, after we divide by 2, right? So we have the decimal value and the remainder after we divide by 2 is going to be this. And so firstly, we find the remainder. So for example, here in the example that they give, it was 4 divided by 2 and then it was a remainder of 0 and we are storing it at the back because we are using i and i in our situation is going to be 7 for the first um, for the mo rightmost binary and then what we want to do is divide the decimal by 2 so decimal equals to sorry decimal value is equals to decimal value divide by 2 but we can shorten it by doing something like this all right it's the exact same thing so it's as simple as that now if we print our binary array, we will be getting the decimal. So 4 and i equals to 0, i less than a bit and byte, i plus plus. Alright, so let's print out every single item in this array. So um, let's just run it for a moment and let me add my semicolons. Um, looks like it was just missing in one place. Okay. So make bulbs. Okay, so I forgot to declare my length here. Make bulbs. Shadows local variable. All right, so it seems like we can't be using i uh, again because we are already using in the for loop above. We can't be using i again here. So let's use j and then change here j and here j and here j 
and here J, here J, here J, and the last one. Okay, so now it should work. Oh my gosh, uh, sorry, I messed this up for JavaScript because JavaScript it doesn't really matter if you use single or double quotes. So now it should be working. Oh my gosh, finally, uh, dot slash bulbs message i'll just use h for our example and as you can see uh, h is gonna be 01001000 wow perfect first try um and now uh, let's just test it by doing hi instead of just h just so we can test all the situations make bulbs dot slash bulbs hi exclamation mark oh my okay my bad it's not supposed I'm not supposed to be adding the backslash n here it's supposed to be at the end of this entire for loop it's supposed to be at the end of a particular character after we are done with converting the character uh, into binary so it's gonna be here print f backslash n and let's see how it goes make bulbs dot slash bulbs hi wow awesome so we got it correct now we want to instead of printing the binary we want to print either a bulb that is lit or a bulb that is not lit how we do that is uh, by running the print bulb function all right so it's gonna be print bulb and we pass in the binary equivalent either zero or one and instead of it just printing zero one zero zero it's gonna be printing uh, dark light dark dark all right and then we have a backslash n so it's gonna be uh, looking very nice make bulbs uh, yeah, semicolon uh, make bulbs dot slash bulbs let's use uh, hi mom all right so it's looking nice actually wow the animation here is pretty nice as well all right so let's give it a quick check 50 to check if everything is all right Alright, so it seems to be that we have passed all the checks. If you guys like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to help and support you guys. And see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.